All right, guys, this is my third time trying to make the video, so let's see what we can do it this time. The van der Waals equation is a more accurate version of the ideal gas equation. The ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, works in most cases, but it makes some assumptions, like there are no intermolecular forces, or the molecules don't have any volume, both of which aren't true, but for the most part, in normal situations, they completely are true, or close enough to true that we don't care about the difference. Now the problem is, if we need a super accurate number, we can't be making those kinds of assumptions. So we have a more accurate version of PV equals nRT, and it's called the van der Waals equation. It's different in that you add a term, an squared over v squared to the pressure, and you subtract a term, nB, from the volume. This A accounts for the fact that there actually are intermolecular forces in or between the gas molecules. And this B accounts for the fact that the molecules actually do take up a little bit of volume. Those are going to change the P and the V slightly so that we get more accurate numbers whenever we use this equation. Now, to demonstrate how much they can affect the numbers, I want to do this question with you, but I'm actually going to change something here. I'm going to change this to 40 degrees Celsius because acetic acid is a liquid at negative 25, so that doesn't make any sense. In any case, here we go. Calculate the pressure exerted by 0.3 moles of acetic acid in a, I'm also going to change this, 2 liter container at 40 degrees Celsius using the ideal gas law. All right, that's easy. PV equals nRT. No big deal. Let's see what we can do. Can you see what's going on? Yes, you can. By the ideal gas law, the pressure is simply nRT over V. Now, I'm going to use atmospheres for my pressure because I'm going to give you this A in atmospheres. Uh, 0.3 moles is my N. My R for atmospheres is 0 0.08206. My temperature is 40 Celsius, which means 315 Kelvin, uh, 313 Kelvin, sorry. Wow, I almost can't add 273 to that. And my volume is two liters. So when I multiply these together, it gives me my pressure in atmospheres, 0 0.3 times 0 0.08206 times 313 divided by 2, 3.85 atmospheres according to the ideal gas law, which we know makes assumptions. Now I chose acetic acid on purpose because there's heavy hydrogen bonding. The A term, which accounts for intermolecular forces, is actually pretty significant. In fact, it's 17.71. So let's do this again, but with the van der Waals equation. To get the pressure from the van der Waals equation, I need to, well, first isolate for P. You can fill in numbers at this point and then solve from there, but I'm gonna do it algebraically to show you what's up. P plus A N squared over V squared is NRT over V minus NB. I brought it over to the other side and I undid multiplication with dividing. So to solve for my pressure, I have my nRT over V minus NB and I'm subtracting AN squared over V squared. I undo adding with subtracting. Ah, seems pretty easy. Let's just fill in the numbers. N, the number of moles is still, can you see the original ideal gas thing there? The number of moles at the beginning was still 0 0.3. I still have my R in atmospheres. I still have my temperature, 313, in Kelvin. And I still have my volume of 2 liters. But I'm going to subtract N times B. That's 0 0.3 times 0 0.0237. 237. I think this actually might be liters per mole. I think that might be a typo. Anyways, you probably weren't paying attention to that anyways. 
A, it turns out, is 17.71 atmospheres liters squared per mole squared, which will cancel out with these units. My number of moles, again, was 0 0.3. And my volume, again, was 2. Now I'm going to do this piece at a time to help you guys with the math. If you're a superstar, you can do it all at once. I really don't care. 0 0.3 times 0 0.08206 times 313 gives me 7.705 on top. And on bottom, I have 2 minus 0 0.3 times 0 0.0237. That's 1.993. And what I'm going to subtract is 17.71 times 0.3 squared divided by 2 squared, which is 0 0.398. See if we can keep going here. We've got 7.705 divided by 1.993 gives me 3.87, ah, which is pretty close to the amount I got from the ideal gas equation. But I have to perturb it or take away this 0.398 that was the a n squared over v squared term. And remember, that's the one that makes the biggest difference here, because it's acetic acid a small molecule with heavy intermolecular forces. Minus 0 0.398, 3.47. Uh, and the answer is atmospheres. Ah, look at that. So the ideal gas equation says the pressure should be 3.85, but the actual pressure is 3.47. And that's exactly what I would expect for a molecule with heavy intermolecular forces. In fact, what happens with acetic acid, if you know the structure of it, is that there's, a, there's hydrogen bonding between the carbonyl oxygen and the hydrogen of each molecule. Kind of like this. The OH from one connects with the carbonyl of the other, and the OH from the other connects with the carbonyl from the original one, and they actually stick together. It's called a dimer, because there are two of them. And the fact that these molecules are sticking together more means essentially we have a lower N than we actually think. We may have put 0.3 moles of stuff in, but because some of them have paired up, we really only have like 0.28 moles of stuff or particles. In any case, all I'm trying to get across to you is that the ideal gas equation gives one pressure and the van der Waals equation gives another pressure and they're different because in the real world most molecules have intermolecular forces and some volume. You never actually have to use this unless you're explicitly asked to though because PV equals NRT works in most real cases for most real gases. And again you have to be given A and B for you to use the van der Waals equation in the first place so it should be obvious to you when you have to. And that is the van der Waals equation. Third time's a charm for me. First time's a charm for you because you watch my videos. Hey, best of luck.